A Bug's Life is the movie. I don't know what, like, ants can, like, <laughs> no. I already know what A Bug's Life is. I don't need to see what the ants are doing. All right, and we are rolling. It is time. Another episode of Cash's Top 5, and today we have one just full of nostalgia. I don't know that we'll have a ton of arguments today. I, I kind of hope we do because it's always fun when we can kind of, you know, get yelling at each other. Uh, but joining me today, a good friend and co-worker. We both teach. Uh, we are in the audiovisual field. Aaliyah English, how are you doing, dear? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, hopefully this one will be filled with a lot of nostalgia. I think so, because uh, I, I know that there's some throwbacks on my list. Um, you know, let's tell the people what we're ranking today. It's our top five favorite what? Top five favorite Pixar movies. So, so it should this, be good. Yeah, th this is as specific as I've gotten, I think, so far, because I've already ranked my top five favorite Disney movies, uh, which only had one Pixar movie uh, on it. So spoiler alert, if you've seen that list, then you might know what's coming at number one. Uh, but that's okay. You don't know the rest, and we are excited to hear your list. Um, and we're, I, I'd say we're of the same generation, but there definitely is a little bit of an age gap. I've got you by several years, I, I believe. Um, so we'll see if that kind of factors into our picks. Yeah. So we both right. were, I feel like we've seen a lot of these in the theater. I, I can, I can feel like we can both say that. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's some, well, there's some that I definitely haven't, uh, you know, because again, I, I love movies um, and I, I, you know, I know you're a big cinephile as well. Um, I was never weirded out by being, by going by myself to the theater. Some people are like, oh, I, I can't even eat by myself. I need somebody to go to the restaurant with me. No, I'll go to the theater by myself. I love watching movies by myself, get my popcorn, get my ginger ale. Nobody makes fun of me for drinking ginger ale. Uh, I get my seat that I like. Uh, but then, you know, Frozen comes out and it's like, well, I kind of want to watch Frozen, but you're the single dude in the theater. You can't, yeah, maybe I'll wait for right, it to come out right. on video. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm the same way. I'm like very much, if I want to see it, I'm just going to go see it. But now that I'm a little older, I'm like, this is a little, I don't want to be that weird person there. So now my like little scapegoat, I have a younger, I have younger cousins and like nieces and nephews now. So like, I'm like, Hey guys, doesn't this movie look great? Now I have to like bribe <laughs> them because sometimes they're like, I don't want to see that. And I'm like, well, I do. And I, I need a kid. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, before, you know, slightly younger me would have been annoyed by that. Cause I'm like, Oh, I got to spend time with little kids. Uh, but now that my, you know, uh, my brother has a kid and has another one on the way, some of my best friends have kids. I'm like, oh, it's not so bad. I'll take them to see a movie. They can go with Uncle Cash. That's fine. Uh, so, right. okay. And then you can just be like, all right, now it's time to go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bye. You know, I'm going to go take a nap, which your parents can't Right. <laughs> uh, our top five favorite Pixar movies of all time, Aaliyah English. Uh, feels weird saying your first name, by the way. You're English to me uh they're in the trenches at work uh number five what do you got all right number five this one was hard i really wanted to stay um with like the older ones but this one just really is near and dear to my heart my number five is the movie coco because it's okay. so good it's so sentimental um i i can't make it through this movie without crying but it's always good tears but it's just one of my i sing poco loco probably once a week so really? i was like it has to make the <laughs> it has to make the list so i will admit i missed coco in theaters uh that was probably one where i was a little self-conscious about being the single guy going to the, the pixar movie by himself um, so I very, very recently watched it on Disney Plus. Uh, one of my good friends, Elena, it's her favorite uh, movie uh, from the Disney episode. Uh, incredible movie. Um, probably, uh, it's tough to say because I feel like we're splitting hairs when it comes to Pixar. They do such great jobs with all of the movies, but I feel like it's probably the most visually beautiful yes, Pixar movie. The colors and everything. Definitely. Yeah. Um, it's Funny kind story of, about that no, go, go for me, I um, 
I didn't watch it in the movie theaters either, but I watched it when I was working at the Boys and Girls Club. And that's probably another reason why it's on my list. It's like one of those jobs where it's like, you leave, but you kind of miss the kids and stuff. Um, so I just remember um, I would take over the computer lab and we would do movie days. And I I don't remember where it was streaming first, but it was around um, fall break time. And I was like, yeah, we can watch Coco. It go, kind of goes along like Halloween's coming up. And I was in the back of the computer room, bawling, <laughs> and the kids were just like, Miss Aaliyah, Miss Aaliyah, are you okay? And I'm like, oh, goodness, I've traumatized these kids. But it was such a good movie still. And then I had to like go home and be like, everybody needs to watch Coco. <laughs> That's a good call. I, w- I was watching it and enjoying it. And there towards the end, when Miguel starts singing to Mama Coco, and she starts remember Boom. oh yes gone everything. it was over at that point like runny nose and everything like yeah. viola davis cry for me <laughs> well and i was thinking this too uh, while i was watching it there's obviously plenty of music in it um you know there are a couple of songs that get repeated a couple times there aren't a ton of musical numbers that you know um some disney pixar movies have you know they'll they kind of stop and break down every couple minutes. Um, and then some don't have any at all. So it was interesting to see where they kind of wove the music in uh, mm-hmm. to keep, you know, the attention of the younger crowd. You know, they can kind of sing along a little bit. Uh, but it was enjoyable for everybody. Uh, yeah, good pick. Um, my number five for you is, and this is going to be controversial maybe, uh, because some people are, you know, anti sequel just leave the original alone. We don't need more. Uh, but by number five, and maybe it ranks higher for some people because I think it's just that good, is Toy Story 3. Um, yes. Yes. I think, uh, I think the story is, is a, a good reason to have a sequel. You know, when a movie comes out, let's just say, oh, I don't know, Anchorman. Comes out in 2004. Funny movie, highly quotable. I was, you know, right at that sweet spot where that's, you know, that's going to determine my sense of humor for movies going forward. And you're like, well, they're never going to make a sequel, right? Until 2012 comes around (laughs) and they're like, oh, they waited until they had a good script. They wanted to make sure they had a good story. No, they just wanted to make a terrible movie to make a lot of money. Um, and the fact that Drake is in that movie, like briefly, <laughs> and that was like a huge sell point, it's like, yeah. uh, okay. <laughs> Awful. I actually, I walked out of the theater, uh, that, and I very, I never do that, but I walked out of Anchorman 2. Anyway, we're talking about Pixar. Uh, Toy Story 3, I think, has a genuine arc of a story. You know, we're introduced to Andy as a little kid in the first one, and now he's 17, 18, getting ready to go off to college. You know, that's a true continuation of, oh, right, what does happen what to happens, these toys? Right. Um, and it's just such a good story. Uh, Ned Beatty, a Hollywood legend, recently just like just passed away this week, very sad. As Lotso, the bear, is a great villain. The movie's usually only as good as its villain. And again, towards the end, Pixar's great at plucking out those heartstrings and, you know, they're trying to hold all the toys back from going down the street. And, oh, you're just like, no, oh, no, no. Yep, exactly. Uh, it it's could a have ranked a little movie. higher, but that just shows how good Pixar is. Toy Story 3 is my number five. It's an awesome movie. And I think they're really good about that. Um, like knowing, because um, Toy Story 3, my, I have an older sister. She graduated in 2008. Um, and that was kind of like her, like, you know, Andy was her in her mind. And for me, it's kind of the same thing with uh, Monsters, Inc. University. That came out right when I was about to go to college or right when I was taking the next step in life. And it's like, you know me so well. Like, what if my major isn't the major that I'm going <laughs> to do in life? What if I do fail? And it's like, they're like, hey, it's okay. Like, you can grow up. So that's another great thing that Pixar does that I love. Agreed. Okay, so we started off with Coco. What do we got at number four? And great segue because I was talking about Monsters Inc. University, but there's nothing like the original. So my number four is Monsters Inc. because okay. it kind of came out at that time where you know you're growing up, and I remember like monsters and all that stuff. And it's just I love Boo. Um, I just love Mike and um, Sully and how they. I just it's 
good Randall as the vin- villain. It's just good all the way around for me. I and it holds a little. I just like the whole series, as I can, as I said, like I like how it kind of grew up with me. So that's why I have that one as my number four. That's a good one. Um, the only issue I had with Monsters Inc. is for some reason Billy Crystal just rubs me the wrong way. I don't know why. Um, and I remember being like I wasn't old, you know, I was a kid when it came out in 01, I think. Uh, mm-hmm. I love John Goodman. You know, he was the dad on Roseanne. He was the voice of uh, the T-Rex in Hey, We're Back, uh, that uh, underrated cartoon movie. And Boo was great. But Billy Crystal's voice, uh, I just recognized it from other things he'd been. I was like, I don't like that. Guy. I don't like this. He's kind of, <laughs> mm, I don't know. And I don't He's the old guy in Princess Bride, um, not Miracle Max, though. Mm-hmm. Do breathe or whatever it is. Um, so maybe that kind of turned me off, but that is a good one. Uh, it didn't make my top five, but again, we're going to be splitting hairs a little bit here. So what's your number four? My number four, I think you'll agree with uh, as enjoying it. Uh, my number four is Coco. Uh, Yay! <laughs> yeah, um, uh, the things we just said, you know, it's a beautiful movie. Um, the only, it, it might have ranked higher for me, but I had some plot issues with it, and I'm getting real nitpicky here, like I'm old man Roger Ebert, like, well, this was hard to follow. Uh, I find it hard to believe that they wouldn't have noticed, like, he would have, Miguel would have found out the, the big reveal way prior to ever stepping into the land of the dead yeah um, yeah that's true but look man it's pick you're you got to just kind of suspend that and just just shut up and have fun uh right. and when you just shut up and have fun there's some really good guitar there's some really good voice work and honestly um you know i don't want to get too sociological with it you know i have some hispanic friends who talk about how great it is to be represented um, in a movie, you know, it's not like it's a, a learning, it's not a documentary, but you really, you really, it re- it's really on display just how meaningful family is in the Hispanic community. And to kind of see that and to see the struggles that Miguel had of being understood and being able to break free. And I don't know, there's just a lot of heart and love and family and, um, it just really touches the heartstrings. And again, it's just a really fun story. It's original, which is big for me. Um, anything that's kind of a retread or something that I've seen before, I'm like, okay, this is a nice your version of this, you know, but the, the, the creativity to come up with a bridge going to the land of the dead during Dia de los Muertos and having this entire world and being bridge back and blah, blah, blah. Uh, really, really, really good. I liked it. I, I, I completely agree. Um, and it's a nice, because I feel like in America, we just say like, oh, Dia de los Muertos is like Halloween. It's the same thing. And it's not. Yeah. And I feel like it did a creative way of kind of deep diving and showing their culture and showing all the things that we just kind of don't know about. I don't want to say forget about because we just don't know. So I, I completely agree. And you got to love Mama Coco. That's one of the best characters oh, ever. Yes. She's so sweet. <laughs> She's like everyone's, everyone's grandma. Like, oh. Yeah. 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 All right. Number three, what you got? Num- number three, we're taking it back. Um, A Bug's Life. Okay. Great I was wondering movie. if this was going to make your list. Now tell me about A Bug's Life. A Bug's Life, um, just the plot. And, you know, I say I probably... <laughs> So I identify with like the the queen um, and how, because I'm not a big party person and my sister, she's always inviting people over and she's like very much like, oh, let's, you know, have a get together. And I'm very much like, Ugh. Um, so <laughs> nice. I, find, I find myself thinking kind of like when they're underground and um, they're waiting for the grasshoppers to come and they're like, they come, they eat, they leave. That's kind of like my mantra. Like, it's okay. People are, they're going to come, they're going to eat, they're going to leave. It's fine. <laughs> find myself like when I get overwhelmed with like social events I'm like they come to eat the the time um but it's just a great story some redemption um the hopper as a villain scared me as a child but it's just so nice to see him you know at the end getting eaten by the bird no, sorry for anybody who hasn't seen it but I feel like everybody's <gasps> seen a book spoiler alert <laughs> <laughs> I was 23 years old <laughs> 
Um, but it's just, and also because it's one of the first ones, I just had to put it on the list. So a yeah. bug's life. So how did you feel about ants? Uh, did you watch ants? Were you anti ants? Did it even factor? So I probably watched ants for the first time, maybe a couple of years ago, but growing up is very much like, no, a bug's life is the movie. I don't know what like ants can like, <laughs> no, I already know what a bug's life is. I don't need to see what the ants are doing. So yeah. Um, ants is like, uh, is Pepsi okay of movies? Like, <laughs> no, it's not. No. On Coke. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's not. They're not the same. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, all right. So I had Toy Story three. I had Coco, same as you uh, on your list. My number three uh, is again. We're gonna see originality come to the forefront of of what makes a really good movie, especially in the Pixar universe. Uh, but Up is my number three. Uh, if I honestly, the first ten minutes could make your top five list alone. Like if that were just a short, I'd be like, I don't care if it's not feature length film uh, or if it's, you know, two hours long or whatever, I don't have. Uh, that alone is amazing, but the story is original. The characters are great. Russell is a, a cute little kid. Uh, Kevin the bird has some, um, some of the funniest moments, just the little stare uh, that the bird has. Uh, Doug the dog, uh, the, uh, just the, the fantasy of having a house lifted away by balloons, just that image is so whimsical and fun. Uh, I, I don't know. It honestly could rank higher. Uh, I, I'm repeating myself. These are just such good movies. Um, but I absolutely loved Up. It's a, it's a, oh, it's such a great movie. And I completely agree with like the first 10 minutes. I remember my first time watching that, of course, crying in the first 10 minutes. Cause you know, and that, I feel like Up was my realization. Like I'm getting older and more emotional. Cause I was like, why am I crying? <laughs> <laughs> and now I find myself crying on like all Pixar movies, but whatever. Um, but just the first 10 minutes. And I, I just remember thinking, so where are we going to go from here? Because this is, already a great story um and then just you know adventures out there <laughs> yeah absolutely um we've got coco monsters inc a bug's life man this is and this is getting tough number two for me yeah the incredibles who doesn't love a yeah. superhero family who has to go <laughs> undercover and I you know I just when I was making this list I was thinking about all of the things that I say in everyday life and the what are you waiting for I don't know something amazing I guess like that stays in my mind and I say that often I probably say a lot of Pixar movie quotes a lot um but yeah, yeah just the superhero family and um them coming together and in syndrome if everybody's super no one will be like everything all the gyms it's it's i watch that movie probably once a month <laughs> wow so i think this is where the generation like again we're the same generation but i'm probably the older end of our generation you're on the younger end uh because i think we're separated by like six or seven years um mm -hmm. i the Incredibles could rank higher on my list uh, of all the Pixar movies, but it came out at the wrong time for me, uh, which is a me problem. It's not a Pixar problem, uh, but it came out in 04. So I was, you know, 15, 16 years old. Uh, you couldn't tell me You're too anything. Cool. I was too cool. I didn't want to watch no dumb kid cartoon movie, <laughs> uh, which is kind of sad. So there's kind of that stretch there where I was wondering like, like your sweet spot is just a little behind mine. Just you know, like when you said a bug's life, I was like, a bug's life, I was on the cusp of that. You know, I enjoyed bug's life, but like Incredibles came out uh, in 04, Cars was 06, um, Nemo's in there as well, maybe 03. So there's a stretch there. Where I was like, no, I'm not going to watch these kitty movies. I'm going to watch football. I'm going to watch, you know, a Tarantino movie. I'm so cool. I think for me, that whole Cars era is kind of where it starts to cut off for me. That's when I'm like, oh, I'm too cool because I have a, like I, my younger cousins that I take to the movies with me. They were really into Cars. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm, I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> like Cars 2 is coming out. Mm, yeah, okay. You go, no, it's fine. Yeah. 
but yeah. But I think that speaks to how good some of the movies are uh, that the, the later ones, you know, like we're both, you know, loving on Coco and there might be some other newer ones that are on our list that uh, even as adults, you know, you have to get through that, those terrible teenage years uh, mm -hmm. to start appreciating stuff. And uh, yeah, no, Incredibles is a good pick. Uh, I remember enjoying it, watching it later on, you know, as a normal adult, not a, you know, dumb teenager. Uh, number two for you is a classic. I mean, it's the one that started it all. Um, it felt weird putting two from the same franchise on my top five, but I had to be honest, my number two is Toy Story, 1995. Um, when you talk about nostalgia, when you talk about the 90s, uh, it starts and ends with Toy Story. I mean, it was just so original and so cool. I mean, you couldn't have gotten two bigger guys on the planet and Tom Hanks and, and Tim Allen as your main guys. You know, Tim Allen was the king of the world in 94, um, the year before Toy Story came out. Tom Hanks, America's sweetheart uh, uh, on the male side. Um, great, funny characters, the kids, the pizza planet. Like I wanted to play in that arcade. It looks so much fun. Uh, I don't know, I don't, Toy Story is just where it's at. I agree. It's yes, I agree. <laughs> I agree so much that Toy Story is actually my number one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was wondering if it was going to be on there. Oh yes, definitely. And this one was hard because all of the Toy Story franchise is great. I even like the most recent one um, with Forky and all of them because I just feel like the lessons and as an adult just watching it from the different perspectives. But yes, Toy Story is my number one. Um, a couple of honor, honorable mentions because um, you were talking about the newer ones. Like, I really liked Soul. I thought that was a great way to kind of explore, like, what happens after or before, or after we die or before we get here. I thought that was a great um, way of explaining that. Um, Up was also, I really, if I had like a top eight or a top 10, Up is like, top, is number six for me. Um, but yeah. To, you can't it's just it's you can't go wrong with toy story that's why i was like when i made my list i was like number one toy story and then i kind of was like five through four trying to figure that out but yeah completely. that's how that's kind of how i approach my list as well um i had toy story at number three coco number four up was number three uh toy story number two your number one my number one is actually one of the newer ones uh so I just had a different connection with it. And my number one for you is Inside Out. Um, it's just, when it comes to originality, again, I'm beating a dead horse. Uh, such an original story, you know, um, all the different emotions in a girl's head. Um, those characters are amazing. Uh, they're so good. Amy Poehler as Joy is literally that. She's Joy. Amy Poehler can do no wrong. I love her. Um, you know, bing bong, when you talk about a great, fun, lovable character and then the heartstrings, you know, with what happens to bing bong. Um, sadness was so funny, had some incredible moments. She's so funny in that movie. Um, yeah, it, there was just something about Inside Out that it just enthralled me. It, it pulled me in. I followed along. It's, it's fantastical. It's, it's rooted in realism because of, we all have these emotions that we're dealing with and to see them played out in these great characters. Um, yeah, it's I, just like you. I was like, well, Inside Out is my number one. Where do we go from there? And that's that's where we go. Well, I really struggled to put that one on the list. And I was like, that if you could see my paper, it's like on there and like crossed out and then it's moved <laughs> down. And then like, it's, yeah. Oh, it's such a great movie. But as you said, it's, it's, you can't really go wrong with a Pixar movie. I don't think I've seen one or even a Pixar short, but I was like, yeah, no, I don't like this. <laughs> Everything is, they do a really good job. No, they, they do. They must have some sort of quality control. Like the people who run Chick-fil-A must run Pixar because it's always good. It's never bad. Um, like I said, there was a few there that I missed because of my growing up. You know, Nemo in 03, Incredibles 04, Cars 06, that middle school, high school sweet spot where, no. Um, and I will admit, I haven't seen Soul yet, and I am a gigantic 
Jamie Foxx fan, like huge, huge, huge. And what really, really bums me out about that is I didn't get to see it in theaters. You know, it, uh, pandemic, everything's closed. Um, so I feel like watching it, you know, on a laptop or on even on a TV in the living room doesn't necessarily get to do the justice that a theater would, but I have a feeling I'm going to like it. Um, I just haven't watched it yet. So I would be curious to see if it cracks the top five because I imagine I will really like that one. I thought it was great. And I think maybe the setup for me was a little, um, made a little bit better because um, it came out around a holiday. Was it Christmas or Thanksgiving? I can't remember. I know, or maybe, I know it came out around like a holiday time. Christmas, Christmas Day. Christmas, okay. Christmas, because Wonder Woman 1984 came out the same time. And I don't know if you've seen Wonder Woman 1984, but if you haven't, <laughs> you're not missing anything. <laughs> yes, so. Terrible. I just, yes, it's, it's, oh, it was, yeah, not good. <laughs> um, yeah, not good at all. Um, so we, as a family, we kind of like my immediate family. So my mom, my dad, my sisters, we kind of got together at my house and had dinner, um, just something small. We kind of, you know, not able to get with our grandparents and everything and do the big dinner that we normally do. So we were like, let's watch Wonder Woman 1984. It'll be just like a regular Christmas. Instead of going to the movie theater, we'll just watch it at home. And major disappointment. And then after that, we were like, okay, let's check out Soul. Like, it can only go up from here. And yeah, it, and Pixar really, has such a good track record. Yeah. And it, and it, it it really went up from there. Yeah. So that's another reason why I probably really that one probably will have a special place in my heart. I have a feeling that whoever watches this is going to make a plan to watch a couple of our movies. You know, like man, I haven't watched that in forever. I need to. It's so good. Uh, lots of nostalgia in this one. I appreciate you taking the time uh, to hang with us, Miss English. Uh, is there anything you'd like to plug? Uh, any tour dates? Any any social media? Anything like that that you want to plug? <laughs> um, I wish I don't have anything personally to plug, um, but make sure you guys are staying socially distant, and getting vaccinated, um, yep. staying safe out there, having a fun summer. Um, but yeah, I don't. I I wish I had something. I wish I was had something personal to plug, but I'm not well. That cool. We've talked about doing some little side projects on our own, so there may be some some podcasting and, and future videos uh, coming in the near future for us. So we'll stay tuned on that for now. But uh, English, I appreciate you, dear. Uh, I'll see you at work here in probably just a couple of weeks, uh, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for having me.